Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. So this is part four video on .NET 7 API and View 3 CRUD sample application. So in this video, our aim is to create a read operation. Okay, for that we are going to create a get endpoint in our web API application. Okay, so let's go to the controllers folder and let's create a controller for our demo. Okay, so controller is a simple class and that contains HTTP action method. Each action method gets invoked for respect to HTTP request. Okay, so let's first create the controller. So I will name it like each controller. Okay, okay, here is our beach controller. So it must inherit the controller base that loads from the microsoft.asp.net core.mvc okay and here we decorated with an attribute like api controller so this applies some inbuilt api functionalities to this controller okay such like versioning those things okay and here we are using the attribute routing so here if you see so if you see here within the square braces we have added controller that means route must be the name of the controller name okay so route will be the beach okay if you don't specify this uh, controller with square brackets then it won't be an expression it is a normal string then the route value will be the simple controller okay so to take the name of the controller name you have to enclose it with square brackets now the route will be the beach okay so as a first step first let's inject the our db context into the constructor of our controller okay so private read only context okay Let's import the namespace and assign it here. Okay, now let's create our action method. So action method is normal function that get executed for the HTTP request. Okay, since we are doing the read operation, right? Means I want to fetch all the data from the database. So for that, I am going to create the HTTP get action method. Okay. So to create the action method public, I want to do asynchronous call. So I will use async task and return type will be I action result. So any kind of API response can be used this generic action result. Okay. And name it like get as a convention. And it should be invoked for HTTP get request, right? So here, I have to specify the HTTP verb like HTTP get. Okay. Since currently our controller has only one get endpoint, right? I no need to specify the route explicitly. If we have more than one uh, action method that represents specific uh, uh, HTTP verb, then we must explicitly specify the route. Just like on the controller, how we specified, same way we have to specify the route explicitly. Okay. If we have multiple action methods that represent same HTTP verb, okay? So since I have currently only one, right? I am not going to add the additional path, okay? So by default, based on the HTTP get request, this action method gets executed. So let me fetch the data of all beaches, okay? dot our beach table dot i want to fetch all the data right so i can use two list async i want to use i want to call asynchronous call okay for that we have to import the microsoft nt framework for library namespace okay so it's going to fetch all the data from our table beach table and finally i want to return the response success status so for api success status is 200 
for that I can use method like OK. To that OK, if I pass BHS, so this data will be written as a response to the client. Okay, that's it. This is our simple action method for fetching all the data from our table. So let's run and check the output. Okay, to run from the CLA, I will use command like dot net watch run. Okay. So upon starting our application, we can see a, see a swagger page, which is a testing tool for the developers. And here you can see all the APIs are listed here. So we just created beach, right? Get get endpoint. So that is here. To test it, you can click on try out and execute it. And let's we observe here some data is coming as a response. So this data is dummy data. I have already added in, into the database. So I am able to fetch the data through the API. Okay. So we are done with the action method. Next, we are going to consume this endpoint in our Vue.js application. Okay. So let's go to our Vue.js application. Okay. Now in our Vue.js application in the SRC, we have views folder, right? So these views folders are nothing but page level folders. So I want to create a folder like features. Okay. Instead of this folder, I want to create a new uh, view component. So that component will act as a my home component and it's going to display the, all the collection of items. Okay. So for that, I will name it like the so component name must be starts with capital. Okay. Each list view component name. Okay. And we know that generally the tags a view component contains is script template. Okay. And the styles. Okay. So template element will have our HTML content. So let me add a some dummy data like hello. Okay. So this is my beach list component. Okay. Now I want to so configure route for this component. So for that, we have to go to the router folder and the index.js. So here there are some default routes where I can remove them. Okay. So what I will do, I will change the component here, home component. Okay. I don't want to use the default home component. Okay. So import the component here on the top. Okay. So let's replace it here component. Okay. And there is no I don't want this about component. Let me remove this. So finally our route dot index dot js looks like this and also remove this unused component reference. Okay, now if I run and access my view application, I must see this message. Okay. So let me run. So to run QJS command is npm run dev. So this is the local host that runs our QJS application, copy it and access on our browser. Here need to specify the extension dot view. Okay, so let's go to our beach list component here. Now we have to consume the API into our Vue.js application. So to consume the API, we have to install one more third party library that is Axios, which is the best JS library for consuming the HTTP request. Okay. So it is very simple to install. We open one more terminal for installing the Axios. So command is npm. I axios. If you want, you can Google it. So it's going to install the axios in our system. Okay. So 
so it is done now what i will do i have explained right i am going to use the composition way of writing so to make it this component as composition way of writing instead of optional way here i am going to decorate this script tag with setup attribute that's it now here i can write simple javascript code using the view default function i can create the component okay so the first thing is i want to invoke the api call so for that i have already installed the axios so we cannot directly write a code for axios directly here within the script itself because i want to invoke that api call only when the component is mounted for that we have a life cycle method is like uh, mounted on mounted in view so first let's use that method so on mounted okay it's going to refer from the view library okay in this method i can write the logic that how to work before rendering of the component okay so here i can call my axios call so to call to invoke the api call i can write like axios for that i have to import the axios library okay from axios so since it is a get right get request i have to invoke right there is a method like get okay to this method i have to pass my api endpoint okay so on successful response once the api response is successful we have to listen for the response so now i have to somewhere i have to store that response i have to bind it to the ui so one thing is i can create a variable like constant i will name it like beach collection it's going to be a collection of data right and array but i cannot use a normal constant like this here because whenever this data is changed that must be reflected in our html okay we have in we have in written code for data binding but whenever this data is changed if that data is used inside of the html that should be reflected so in that case we cannot use normal variable like like this so for that we can use one of the reactive variable like ref okay that also comes from the view so we must import it okay so inside of this ref ref i can initialize the initial data of this variable so initially we don't have any data right i am going to give the empty array in empty array of collection so once the api call is successful i can pass the data to this variable now so for that i can use each collection equal to response dot data okay so this is my api response i am assigning to it now here i want to render the data so here i want to loop the this collection of data into my html go to bootstrap website and go for docs and i want to display each item in the bootstrap card so go for card component okay and in that go to bottom section here i want this kind of display so copy the html paste it inside of this container okay and let me remove the duplicate cards we just need one card html template because we are going to loop our collection okay okay to loop it we can use v hyphen for attribute okay on this column i want to loop this entire div item so for that i what i will do v hyphen for okay for looping the any content in the view template okay since beach collection contains our api response right we have to get the information from this variable 
okay to get the information from this variable i can use in so item is a normal template variable okay beach collection is our component variable in will will fetches each item from the beach collection into this variable on every iteration okay and we also have to uh, define the key attribute whenever we loop in vuejs that because it will track each individual item here we looping right to track we have to add the key attribute for that we have to give the unique item okay so what i will do i am going to pass the id value so in the api i will get id column right so this will be the unique value so i am going to pass that value to the key so i can pass it like since the data will be stored into this variable right for each iteration so i can access like item dot id okay and now i want to bind the image url here i have image url right in the api i want to bind it here okay so for that what i can do so to bind for any data to any attribute in the html to make it dynamic binding the attribute must be prefixed with colon okay so then it will be the dynamic uh, attribute okay so i can call it like item dot and what is the property name image url okay and here title i want to display the beach name so to render inside of any element okay we have to use flower brackets okay for data binding for attributes we have to use the colon for inside of the any element we have to use the power brackets okay so item dot i want to bind the name of the beach okay so copy that and add it here and in this paragraph tag i want to display the location okay we know right for dynamic binding we have to use the flower bracket inside of the element so item dot place okay that's it we are ready with our component make sure both the applications are running okay both dotnet and vuejs and here i have forgot to given the endpoint here in this axios get method so let's pass our endpoint so this is my endpoint url so pass it here and save it okay now let's try to access our view application okay so let open the network call to observe the api call okay and reload it and go to network call and you can see here course why because our endpoint portal is 5247 api port number and our uh UJS application port number is 5173 means different ports technically they are different domain so in any ap application whenever a client tries to consume it it will reject it okay so to make our client request accept by our api we must enable the cores okay cross origin issue we are getting right so we must enable the cores so that this course error will be resolved okay for that first we have to go to our web api application and go to program.cs file let me register the course service here okay so let me register here register on the top so builder dot services dot add course okay and we can configure a number of options okay so here in the options i have to add the policy for my course and i have to give here name okay so this name must be used by the middleware course middleware okay so i can define the rules for my course so for now i will do like i'm going to 
they allow any kind of origin okay any kind of header and any kind of method okay so these are my course rules and now this service must be invoked by our middleware so here on top of this redirection i can call the course middleware okay use course and to this course we have to pass our course policy name okay paste it here now let's rerun our uh, application something is missing so semicolon okay rebuild our application to rebuild i can use control r okay save it and control r okay my api application is successfully running now let's go to our view application now if i reload again and go to network call see here network call is successful api is successful now there is no core server and if you observe the preview response is coming and let's check whether it is binding or not not binded okay here i did a mistake why it is not rendering means if you observe our beach collection is type of ref right so in the html i can directly use the ref variable but inside of the component if you want assign data to its variable it should be assigned to value okay should not directly assign it to the a variable name itself dot value you have to assign now save it and check again see my data is rendering nice card display and beach name location images are rendering so that's all about the read operation in dotnet 7 and view sample application next we are going to implement create operation thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video delivered some useful content to you all if you like my video Please do support me by subscribing to my channel as well as liking the video. Soon we are going to meet with new content. Until then, signing off.